Hey everybody, Jessica Cabasi here. Um, in today's tutorial, I'm going to go over something a little different. I know I do a lot of fashion editing and coloring, but actually I first started out doing graphic design, so I do want to um, go over some of the graphic design elements that I did learn. And um, I used to do a lot of photo, photo manipulation, and that's kind of how I got started into fashion photography in the first place. So um, we're going to go over the splatter effect. It's really easy to do, it looks awesome, and it's really fun. You can kind of do a little bit of your own variation. So all I've done is just add a picture to a background, and you can, again, copy and paste any kind of image you want. You, some uh, designers add like a faded gradient, like a radial gradient, which I will go over. But I'm just going to add a white background to begin with. And usually what people will do is cut out the picture. Um, and make it just like a silhouette of the image but I'm actually just going to keep it like this um, because the background's already light so that would kind of work out pretty well so we're just going to keep it the way it is now the first thing you want to do is make a mask of the image and then you want to invert so you want to press command I and if you don't know how to use masks I mentioned this in all my videos I have tutorials on my page now um, I'm going to go, go on over to my brushes and this is literally a collection of brushes throughout the years. I mean I've been collecting them for a while and I hardly use them now that I do photography but I still have a couple of them. I'll try to post links to where I got some of these from but gosh some of these sites don't even exist anymore. So the kind of brushes that you want to use are the splatter brushes so um, let's go ahead and find a really cool one. So what I'm going to show you guys is make sure the opacity is to 100 and make sure your color is the opposite. So just switch it back to white and all you're going to do is just kind of like start coloring it in and as you can see she's kind of showing up but it's looking kind of funky now. You don't want her to look like that obviously. Um, you, sometimes what I do is I actually go over with like a huger brush and then switch on over to black. Black will subtract there you go I just I just made a nursery rhyme black will subtract so you can kind of toggle between white and black so I'm using um, white right now I'm adding because I want to see kind of like where she is so what I do is I usually start with a base and I kind of just like dab a little bit and then I go on over to um, the other brushes and I keep adding them on this one is kind of a little bit hard to see. I'm using a tablet, so. So, the best brushes to use for this would be watercolor, splatter. I'm going to try to find a. Oh, here's a good splatter brush. So, if you just use a splatter brush and you can make it smaller by pressing the little bracket key, that's how you can make it larger or smaller. And if you, as you can see, it just adds on the image, adds on the mask. And it's not destroying your image either, it's still intact, so that's good. So I'm going to go on over and try to find some more cool splatters. So basically this is kind of what it is. I mean, you can, I think I'm going to erase some of the top of her head. And it gets annoying because you have to sit, and the icons are so tiny. I mean, you can make them bigger, but then everything will load, like, like 20 years it'll take to load. I don't have that much time. So I just kind of guess and see. Sometimes what I'll do even is I'll erase a big chunk, and then, um, well, actually, first I will, then I'll add it back. And if you add back only certain areas and leave kind of like in the middle you can see it's kind of a little bit low opacity and you can you can also do it with a low opacity as well so you can kind of do this you can erase and then you can add kind of sporadically in there so that's just kind of what I wanted to go over and you can add in a lot of different stuff to this I'm going to show you guys on a, another background that's kind of what it would look like Usually what people do with it is add like, like a colored background, like a pink background. I like pink, so there we go. 
and I'm going to go back to my little mask. I'm going to try to find a couple more brushes. And really you could use any brush you want. You can literally go crazy with this. I just have so many. I have like a lot of the default brushes, which is kind of my bad because I've kept saving them. So they kept adding on. So I have like a bunch of def the same default brushes too. It's not even like different default brushes. This is like one of my favorite brushes actually. What I'll do with this brush is I'll subtract... So I'll get that texture in there and then I'll just add on so that like it, ha it cuts it out. It's like a cutout. So I think that's kind of cool. And again, I'm just using the black to subtract. So it's kind of like a nice streaky feel to it. I'm going to add in near her lips right here. And another thing that you can do is add another layer. And using kind of the same brushes that you're using, you can add another color and then go from normal to about like overlay. Or actually, no, not overlay. Maybe screen. I haven't done this in a while. Yeah, screen. And you can kind of go over and add in your own thing. And I think it gives it like a nice look. This makes me miss graphic design so much. I haven't designed, well, I haven't done a photo manipulation in a while. But because I've been doing so much photography that it's been taking up a lot of time. I'm switching back my opacity. But this is what I used to do. Just sit and kind of play with it and, and just make a bunch of layers. And I'm going to add just a couple more splatters. And if you go on DeviantArt and you... And I actually have, actually I'll link one of, I have a watercolor pack that you can use on my website. It's from Violet Spell, my website. And you can go on there and download all my brushes. But the, the most um, layer settings I use for this is normally screen, lighten, overlay, and hard light. So those are my faves. I'm trying to find a brush. I mean, I could, I could angle it, but I'm just too lazy to do that right now. I'm just trying to find one more splatter brush. That one looks kind of cool. And I can even put this underneath it actually, kind of give it like a cool look. So this is literally, I mean, what I used to do. I think I'm just gonna like switch back to graphic design. I forget photography, right? I'm gonna add a couple more to my mask and I think I'll be pretty good. I'm just adding it to my mask and make sure that you're selecting your mask because sometimes people will do this. They'll select the picture and then add it and they're like, why is it pink, you know? Make sure you're selecting this little thing right here. And to finish it off, I'm going to just add in some color bubbles, which I love. And what I do is I just grab a default brush. And I set the mode on my new raster layer from normal to about screen. And using a light color. Oh, okay. Not color, dodge screen. There we go. Using a light color, kind of just softly go over. And it kind of adds a pop of color, which is nice. And a lot of designers do this. So. There you have it. I mean, it's that's it really is that easy. And if you wanted to add a final touch, or even if you wanted to go a little further with this, you can add a, a gradient map. And you can put it from black to white. And you can put it from normal to soft light, kind of just to add some more contrast to it. So I, I did this just in a couple of minutes. Um, if you're into this type of design work, you can incorporate it into your photography. If not, I would definitely consider it. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And if anyone's wondering, yes, I did take this photo. Uh, thank you so much for watching.